Today we are going to work with Cypress settings and environment variables. And again this video is split into two. The reason is because Cypress settings are a lot and they are used in various different combinations and some of the settings are enabled only during the console running operation whereas some settings works even without console settings you can just run in the Cypress runner itself. So there are so many different settings available and there are so many different environment variables available in Cypress and they are very very handy and useful as well. So we can create our own environment variables and we can access them within our test and there are many different ways of doing that. So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that I'm gonna flip to Visual Studio Code IDE. So as you can see every time while we create a new project within the Cypress it automatically adds many different files for us. We have already touched the fixtures folder, integration folders and support folder and you can see there is something called as a video folder which is kind of not been used ever and there is another files like cypress.json file. You can see that it is kind of empty right now and it is high time for us to start using this particular file. Well, the cypress.json file is a file which is mainly used for performing settings and setting all the environment variables for you. So the reason why this file is very very handy is because they are something is like a JSON file. We can control this JSON file for the CI CD operations as well. So you can have your own base URL here and you can do a lot of different operations using this particular cypress.json file. And I can quickly show you the information about the environment variables and setting from the Cypress website itself. As you can see there is something called as base URL and there is an environment env and there is an ignore test file like what are the files that you want to ignore. Similarly if you want to have some port you can mention that and similarly the reporters. So the reporters are used for Cypress uh, reporting purposes and there is a reporter options and things of that nature. Similarly timeouts are also available like the default timeout for the command is like 4000 milliseconds so if you want to override that you can mention that using this default command timeout. So all these days our code is executing with the default command timeout of like 4000 but if you want to increase that you can actually do that by setting this particular default command timeout options. So there are many different timeout options available here and there is an explanation of where this is actually being used. Something like cy.visit uses like 60,000 of page load time uh, which is 60,000 milliseconds. So you can increase this as well. Similarly request timeout for the XHR is also available over here and similarly the response timeout. And there are some folders and files like the files to serve folder which is some, nothing but the one which is used by NPM for the applications. And similarly fixtures folder is the one which we have already seen and similarly screenshot folder and plugin folders and videos folder right. So if you want to specify your own location of the video folder you can do that as well. But by default it will put all the files within the cypress slash video folder for you right. So I'm going to quickly show you some of the options by enabling some of the options. You can also set the browsers. So for instance if you want to set the browser with Chrome's web security to true so it will check whether the page is actually of same origin policy if not it is going to be uh, throwing you an error and similarly you can blacklist certain host you can modify the observative codes as well right so let's quickly jump into the settings and start working with it so the first thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to set the video to true so don't think that if I set this video to true, if I run the test this guy, if I just run this test, and if you expect any video to be coming into this folder, for sure you will be in bad luck. Actually there is nothing called a video which is being generated during the test run using this way which is nothing but using this particular runner the UI runner. Rather the test can generate the video if you are running this particular code from the command line. So for the first time we are going to be running the test from the command line here. So for that I am just going to be opening the item 
here. And then I'm just going to be running, let's say I'm going to run this eaapp.spec.js file. For doing that, the very, very easiest option is to call the npx cypress off run. And then I can specify the spec here. So the spec which I'm going to be specifying is this one. So I'm just going to copy the path and I'm going to paste it over here this particular spec file right and if I run this time what's gonna basically happen is it's gonna call the electron browser you can see it is running in a headless mode by default and it is running the test for us the testing uh, the test EA application and it has successfully completed and then it is putting all the files within the video folder. So you can see that it is in Udemy Cypress, uh, Cypress of videos slash examples of this one. So this one, you can see this time I have an examples folder and I have a media file, which is nothing but the MP4 folder as well, right? So now if I reveal this in the finder, you can see I have this MP4 file. And if I play this, you can see it is going to show me what has really happened behind the scene using this command. So this video file will be generated if you just set the video to true option in the setting. Similarly, if you want to take a screenshot of the failure, let's say if there is something which happens and if you want to take a screenshot of the failures and you want to store that particular file as well. So you can do that as well if you just specify the screenshots folder. So by default, the screenshot will be taken during the runtime. So if I just want to make this test to be failing. So I'm going to even specify the screenshot folder this time. So I'm going to go here. So I'm going to call this as screenshot folder. And let's put this particular file folder name, the videos folder name. So copy path over here or maybe control Z copy the relative path let's try with the relative path and I'm just going to uh, save it and I'm just wanna make the test to fail this time so for that I'm just gonna go to the uh, code I'm just going to make this as 444. I'm just going to save this guy and I'm just going to run this test again. So basically this time the code should fail because it couldn't be able to find that employee list of 444 and it is running the test right now. So just ignore about this particular dot ds underscore store. So this is just a warning and the test has successfully executed but somehow the test has got failed as you can see uh, it has got failed there, but you see there is something called as a screenshot generated this time. So if I click this, you can see there is a screenshot coming in for us and it tells us that the contains employee list 444 does not exist, which is really, really cool. I just specified like two settings and one of the most greatest option of taking screenshots and videos are automatically coming for me using this particular setting which is really really cool so we can keep on extending this particular settings in even further level and some of the cool thing that I think are these videos and screenshot and other things like timeouts you can just keep on adding and you can work with that similarly the base URL is something which is also very very handy because if we just give this base URL you can specify that slash that's it so it's gonna be replacing that code using the base URL that you have specified. So for instance, if you just go here to the cypress.json file, and if you just specify the base URL of the application, let's copy this particular, and just put a slash here, settings over here, save this guy. And now if I just run this test, Of course, the test will fail, but just that if you see the video this time, you can see that it just put a slash there, 
and then it has navigated to the application using the base URL that we have specified and then it is navigating there. Right? And similarly we can use this slash of accounts slash login to verify if the particular page is actually coming in or not using this particular base URL. So base URL is also one of the most handy setting that people will use and it will automatically replace for production and for the testing environments. You can keep on changing that based on whatever that you can do. In our next video, we'll still talk about the settings, some of them, and also we'll discuss how to work with the environments and environment variables.